Today, we're going to change the lower unit oil in our Volvo Penta Duo Prop Outdrive. It's not as easy as you think. It's a little bit weird and different than other ones. Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy. And that's what we're doing today. So what's different about one of these is that many outboard motors and outdrives have drain plugs on the side down here. And this Volvo Penta, the drain is an Allen key underneath of the prop shaft. So in order to drain the oil out, you have to take off both propellers. I have another video where I show how I took off the props. That's up here. Take a look at that if you want to. This is where you drain your oil. There's a Allen key down here, hex head key, whatever. So I found an eight millimeter fits in here, which is weird because most of the stuff on my boat is not metric. So that's where you drain the oil. Then there's a couple other wacky aspects to this. Yes, I started working on this project without you because there was a lot to it. So this cover, has three 3 8 bolts holding it on. One here and two up here. And under this cover, which is plastic, is the shift linkage and everything. This screw right here is where your level is. So whenever we put the oil in, we're gonna pump it up till it runs out of here. So one of the cool bonuses is that it has a dipstick located all the way here at the top and you have to use a wrench to get this loose. I think it's like a 9 16 It has an O-ring on it. This flat area here is your indicator for whether it's low or full of uh, oil. So that's kind of cool, but it's definitely a bit of a hassle because there's more to it than there is a typical outdrive. So the first thing we want to do is we took the... Uh, the top one loose, and I already pre-loosened this, just so you know. That's why this is coming loose. So I have a drain pan under here. Wow. How long is this bolt? There we go. And you can see the O-ring is really chewed up on here. So we definitely need to replace this O-ring, without a doubt, because and it sits in a groove. So we have to make sure we got the right size O-ring. So What's good is our oil looks good. It's nice and black. It's not milky, so there's no water in it. That's important. So let's let that drain out for a bit. I also pre-loosened this plug right here. This is interesting because it doesn't have a hex head on there for to fit a wrench or a socket. So it just has a screwdriver head. I sprayed around it with some penetrant. I scraped it really good. I started hammering on my screwdriver and I couldn't get this to budge. So a trick is if you have one of these screwdrivers like this, you can find a wrench. This one's a 3 8 that will fit on here to help you turn the screwdriver to break things free. And that's how I broke that free. I actually I put a wrench on here and then popped it. That's the only way I could get this to break free. So we're going to take this one all the way out as well. Let's see what we got here. All right, so there's another O-ring on this too. And this has the magnet tip for collecting metal shavings, and it's very clean looking. So the only thing that looks bad on here are the O-rings and the blackness of this uh, outdrive oil. When we wipe these off, they look really good. So while our oil is draining, I bought an assortment of o-rings and i'm hoping maybe i have some that are the right size here i'm going to put links in the description to get some of the parts and tools needed to do this job all right so i've got the lower bolt nice and clean and i've got a 3 8 o-ring here let's try to see how that looks on here this 3 8 o-ring seems a little bit sloppy on here see how it's kind of loose i think it's actually going to be too loose and it'll actually slide out and this one here has rubber set in here. I don't know if that's an O-ring that's compressed or if that's an actual inset washer. Our dipstick actually just uses a 3 8 
So it matches up with this 3 8 O-ring from this kit. All right, so while the oil is draining out of here, let me explain to you how this works. So these units, you don't fill them from the top. If you've never done an outdrive or an outboard motor, lower unit oil before, the way it works is you have to pump the oil in from the bottom till it comes out at the fill point. So some outboard motors have two separate plugs, one down low here, one up high. Matter of fact, one of the first videos I made was me changing the lower unit oil on my old outboard motor. And you take this plug out, that plug out, it drains out, then you pump it in from the bottom till it comes out the top and you put the two plugs back in. It's very straightforward. This Volvo Penta is a little bit more complicated because obviously taking the duo props off, you have to take this apart and you have three separate spots. So the way this works is when we're all done, what you need is you need something like this. This fits into the top of our bottle of outdrive gear oil and then you pump it in to the outdrive like this. Pumping it into here until it comes out this hole here. That way you reduce the chance of there being any air in here and it being nice and full of oil. And you're supposed to do it slowly. You don't want to do it under any kind of pressure. I am going to check this fitting to see if this thing threads in here because sometimes these things are a little bit different depending on the application. Okay, so it looks like the regular plastic one. I don't need the special adapter. Looks like this one threads in. If I thread this in there to get the oil in, because this has little tabs and ears on it, can't get this piece out because it's kind of fighting with me a little bit here. But we might be able to get it to work. We might need something special for that too. <laughs> this one here works in Evan Rude outdrives and and then it has that adapter for, I guess, mercuries and some other options. So with changing your outdrive oil, if you don't like getting messy and you don't have a handful of tools like 3 8 wrenches, Allen wrenches, and a bit of patience, oh, and a prop puller, then this might not be uh, something that you want to tackle. So also the way that you're supposed to do this is once you pump this full of oil, where the oil is coming out up here, then you put in your top plugs, and that way whenever you take your bottom plugs out, you don't lose much oil. And afterwards, after running it for a little bit or checking things out, you pull the dipstick up top here, and you can add a little bit of oil through the dipstick at the top. But you don't normally fill it through the dipstick from the top. So because our bottom drain plug O-ring was wasted, I have to go get a new one of those to fit on here before I can do this oil change and put that back in there. So for now, we're gonna let this oil drain and I'm gonna set these plugs in just to keep dirt from getting back into, into the engine, into the outdrive. <laughs> if this video is helpful, I do have other videos where I work on this Volvo Penta 5.7 GSI Duo Prop. I have a video where I've winterized it, we're removing the props, uh, working on the steering actuator, and basically anything that I do with this engine and this boat, uh, I shoot videos for it. And sometimes we have videos of things where we make mistakes, and sometimes the videos are successful projects. So the fluid I'm using is ADW90 Synthetic Blend Lower Unit Gear Lube. Um, which is for, it says it's from West Marine, and it says it's ideal for use in all modern outboards and stern drives. There is a special Volvo Penta fluid that this is called for, and then they revised the information a few years ago to be able to use 75W90. This is 80W90. I'm not concerned with using ADW90 versus 75W90, considering my outdrive is 20 years old and the 80 is the winter. And I only use my boat in the warmer months. So 90 is still 90. Uh, the, the mild difference between a 75W90 and an 80W90, 
I don't think will cause any problems here. But if you know otherwise, please be sure to put that in the comments below because I'd love to hear if there's better information out there. All right, here we are. A couple hours later, actually. Um, I've been just letting the oil drain out down here. And as you can see, it's still, some is still slowly running out. Uh, it'll probably run out till the end of time. So <laughs> we're going to call it a day with that right now and say that that's drained enough. I went up to the store and I got a new O-ring for this drain plug bolt because the O-ring I had on here was really fat and I test threaded it in the hole down here. And when I threaded it in, it pushed the O-ring off of this groove and the O-ring should remain in the groove. So I got a nice thin O-ring up at the store to replace it while all that was draining out. We can start pumping in our new fluid. Let's see if this goes in through here. What's nice about pumping it in through one of these bottles is you can see how much is going in on the side of the bottle as the line goes down every time I pump. So as you can see, it's slowly going in. So we're gonna watch this drain hole here while I'm pumping fluid in down here. And this bottle is 946 milliliters or 32 US fluid ounces. Make sure you have lots of rags when you go to do a job like this. Hey, there we go. So it took two full quarts. So now with the still in the bottom, so we've tightened that up. We're gonna stick the dipstick in. This is just to help keep fluid from running out while I'm putting in the bottom drain. Pull this out. and try not to lose much while well, we put this back in. This bolt is very long and it's right underneath of the prop shaft so it's very difficult to get a good handle on this thing to thread it in. What we do is after I get this threaded in I'm gonna check the oil with the dipstick and we can top anything up with the dipstick. I'm gonna wipe all of this off down here at the bottom to make sure we've got this sealed off good and that we're not losing fluid out the bottom. Of course, right now there's a big old mess down here so we got a, got a lot to clean up. So we get this one clean and dry, and we get this clean and dry. Now, even though we had fluid coming out here, there is nothing reading on this dipstick. So we are gonna have to add, to add more fluid to the top because it was coming out there. But the dipstick is supposed to read 
with fluid all the way up to here. Luckily we've got a little bit left in this bottle. I doubt that little bit of oil I poured in through here is going to make a difference on the dipstick, let's see. But we've run almost two full quarts into here. Of course now the dipstick is reading over full. So we're going to let that settle that's in here for a while. I'm going to just button this all the way down. We shall see. I'll check the fluid tomorrow. We'll see how it looks. If there's a little bit that needs to be added, it can be added through this dipstick tube like I just did. You always want to finger tighten these screws first to make sure that they don't cross thread. We'll come back later on. We're going to double check to make sure nothing's leaking out the bottom. Double check our level at the top, top off if necessary, drain out from the middle drain plug if we've overfilled it, and uh, then we'll be putting our props back on. And that's all done. So while it's not as straightforward and simple as doing a regular outboard motor, it's not impossible to do. Thank you so much for watching. Here's a video picked just for you and a playlist of videos similar to this one. Stay safe out there in the water. Let's take a look, see if I got an over to the right side. If not, I'll be heading back to the store.